Good morning everyone. Let's start with today's topic that is EMG also known as electromyography. Contents will be definition and history, motor unit and its action potential, recording of EMG three phases, instrumentation which are five parts. When we talk about EMG, the first person who in who demonstrated that electrical properties or the muscle potential can be measured with an external instrument applied that was demonstrated by Louis Galvani in the year 1971. So the definition of electromyography is nothing but it's an instrument that records the electrical potential from the muscles and nerves. As I already told in history that Louis Galvani in 1971 presented the first report on electrical properties of muscles and nerves. He demonstrated muscle activity followed by stimulation of nerves and recorded potentials from the muscles fiber, muscle fibers in frog. He demonstrated in frog. So coming to what is motor unit now? Motor unit, it just can remember for now it consists of alpha motor neuron and all the muscle fibers it innervates. So motor unit consists of alpha motor neuron and all the muscle fiber it innervates. The stimulus that the muscle fiber receives initiating the contractile process is transmitted through an alpha motor neuron from brain when a brain is going to tell the muscle to contract the impulse is transmitted via alpha motor neuron to the brain thus con leading to the contraction of the muscle the contraction of entire muscle is the result of many motor units firing asynchronously and repeatedly this is very important when certain stimulus is passed from the brain the motor fiber, uh, the motor units don't fire up synchronously. That is, at a time, every motor unit doesn't fire up. It is asynchronously. For example, if 5 Newton force is needed to lift something, so maybe only 5 motor units are fired, not 100 motor units which are per present in a, that particular muscle. So when you are lifting 100 tons, 100 Newton, of force applied by any object when you are lifting that object then you may require 100 motor units to fire so the firing of motor unit is asynchronous and in and is repeated in nature now coming to the diagram let's look into how is motor unit and how it is connected to the spinal cord so uh, when when we are talking about spinal cord as you can see in the picture it has dorsal root and ventral root and ventral horn cells when the nerve is going to transmit from spinal cord through ventral root to the it reaches the nerve it reaches the muscle so for example let's take larger bulk muscle and smaller bulk muscle let's consider uh, platysma and gastrocnemius uh, respectively for uh, platysma for smaller bulk muscle and larger bulk muscle let it be gastrocnemius so when we are talking about that as i already told the motor unit firing is asynchronous and repeated so asynchronous meaning how much ton or how much newton of force is required only that many number of motor units are getting fired so when uh, keep keeping that in brain look at this diagram when motor nerve exon is innervating larger bulk muscles it passes many nerve endings while it is innervating smaller bulk muscles it passes only fewer nerve endings because it can cover up entire area just on the basis of bulk Also remember when we are talking about larger unit, larger motor unit or larger bulk muscle uh, which is supplied by larger motor unit, it consists of larger exon and smaller bulk consists of smaller exon. Also larger motor unit supplies many fibers, primarily type 2 fibers, whereas smaller motor unit supplies only, only uh, primarily type 1 fibers and also fewer fibers. Recruitment force recruited in forceful contraction Re recruitment force in the larger motor unit the when the motor unit wants to recruit all the muscle fibers the recruitment is in a forceful contraction whereas recruited first and most activity is only by a smaller motor unit coming to as i already told giving you an example 
that um, platysma let it let me consider it to be in uh, smaller motor unit fiber or else smaller bulk and gastronomous if you consider it in larger bulk look into the uh, look into the table number of motor unit per muscle platysma has thousand units whereas gastronomous has 600 units so each motor supplies how many fibers in platysma one motor unit supplies only 25 fibers so platysma requires many number of motor units to just to recruit entire muscle group whereas gastronomous one motor unit supplies 2000 muscle fiber hence the number of recruit uh, number of motor unit present in the gastronomous may be lesser also because even the bulk is more at one motor unit can just recruit so many number that is 2000 muscle fiber coming to the next point magnitude of contraction when we are talking about magnitude of contraction uh, we need to remember two things the magnitude of contraction of any muscle is altered by two main things: changing the number of motor units that are activated if the number of motor units activated are lesser then the force of contraction will be less if the number of motor units are activated more then the force is definitely more frequency at which they are activated whether all are activated repeatedly then there is no fatigue seen in the muscle if some motor units are activated and there is a larger gap between the next set of motor unit to activate then there is definitely fatigue seen also uh, remember that the number of motor units in a muscle as well as a structure as the structure of these units varies from muscle to muscle as we already saw in the last slide also remember size principle of motor unit recruitment what does it tell initial motor contraction smaller cell bodies and fewer motor neurons are recruited first as the force is increased larger motor units are recruited this is already known it is already present in physiology and anatomy size of motor unit is to number of muscle fiber and size of motor nerve exon okay now coming to motor unit action potential now we already learned what does motor unit consist one exon one anterior horn cell and all the fibers that is that it is innervating it's the same thing one exon one anterior horn cell and all the fibers that it that it is innervating exon conducts an impulse to the fibers causing them to depolarize at the same time producing electrical activity known as motor unit action potential this is only measured by your emg so the same thing what i just now told Exon conducts an impulse to the fibers causing them to depolarize, producing motor unit action potential which is recorded as EMG. Now how EMG, how uh, MUP is recorded? This is how it is recorded in the diagram. First, the brain should tell a muscle to contract. So first important thing is brain. After that, the brain doesn't tell directly the muscle to contract. So, brain has to pass the stimulus through exon to the muscle. That is your NMJ, neuromuscular junction. Once the neuromuscular, the sim, uh, signal from the brain reaches your neuromuscular junction, the muscle develops an electricity known as muscle action potential or muscle electrical potential. This electrical potential is only measured in EMG, recorded as MUAP, that is your motor unit action potential. So now we understand, we understood that the brain is going to send the impulse through exon to NMJ in order to contract the muscle. While contracting, while the muscle is contracting, there is some energy or electricity developed in the muscle which is known as motor unit action potential. Now how this is recorded once it is developed, it is sensed by the surface electrode of EMG. Whatever it is, surface electrode or your needle electrode or your fine wire inveiling electrode or whatever it is, those electrodes of the uh, EMG are placed on that side which senses the electrical signal produced by the muscle. After sensing, it is going to send to the output system. Let it be your computer or any audio visual aid. Now coming to recording phase of EMG. There are three recording phases of EMG, input phase, processor phase and output phase. Let's look into what does these three phases consist in them. Input phase. These consist of electrodes. 
always remember the input phase from which is generated in a body to get it out of into the system to see what is happening in the body we need something called as electrode let uh, there are different types of electrode i'll be discussing that in the further videos for now just remember recording phases of emg the first phase is input phase this input signal is received via electrodes from the human body coming to second phase that is your processor phase processor phase is via ampli amplification that is let it be increase or decrease but here we usually do increase in the voltage filtering whichever is not required is filtered out and conversion just to see or just to visualize or auditorily hear the signals because we don't understand the digital language of the computer this is the importance of ad converter or conversion phase now coming to phase 3 that is now this is all happened in input phase the um, uh, signals are gone into the electrode they are traveling to the system now Where, what happens next Na next is amplification that is it gets ma magnitude or amplified or else added or uh, multiplied then after that is getting filtered out which which are not required they are just filtered out after that is conversion just to see them after converting we need to see or we need to hear right that is nothing but your phase 3 that is output phase via audio or visual signals that let the let now for example let it be computer coming to instrumentation last video we have already dealt in biofeedback if you are not if you guys have not watched i'll put up the link in the description box you can just make it make a note of it instrumentation first one muscle is getting contracted let it be eccentric contraction or concentric contraction we know that when a muscle is getting contraction contracted there's some myoelectrical my potential or your muap motor unit action potential is generating now i we already discussed in the last slide that once it is getting generated there is something called as SEMG surface electromyography or any other electrode is placed on that side so that they are picked up that is your input phase so once they are picked up that is the first phase in instrumentation first one is electrode once they are picked up next what is going to happen is amplification now here what happens is the signals are getting multiplied so that we can actually make a note of the signal what is happening in your body if it doesn't get it if it doesn't get amplified then definitely all the signals might have got filtered so that nothing can be visible so amplification is very important in amplification phase it is getting multiplied comes third stage known as filtering stage what happens here is in filtering stage particular bandwidth wavelength of the amplified electrical signal are passed further when you are contracting the muscle not only your muscle is moving your electrodes are moving your fascia is moving nerves are moving so electrode knows only to pick up the signal it doesn't know that the electrode has to pick up only the muscle signal or the signals generated by the muscle so it picks up every signal which is generated underneath it so what it does is it might pick up the muscle muscle contraction uh, signal it might pick up fascia contraction signal it might pick up uh, nerve moving signal it might pick up tendon moving signal it might pick up electrode itself moving on the body signal so we don't need those all things just to you know getting confused what is the MUA, muap of the muscle so we need to filter them out that only happens in your filtering phase coming to the next phase that is your ad converter here every now everything is happening muap are picked up they are getting amplified they are getting filtered now we know what is what is needed to our brain to the therapist brain to read out what is happening into the muscle to know what is happening in the muscle so what he does here what he does here uh, what the machine does here is it just converts so that the human body understand what is muap when you are talking about muap when what is generated in the muscle is not your number or the graph what we see in the emg it can be anything to understand that we need ad converter so that the muap is converted into uh, either your number or your graph 
which is seen in your display unit now talking about the electrodes i already told you there are so many types of electrode so in emg there are around four types of electrode the first one is surface electrode second one is fine wired welding electrode third one needle electrode and fourth one ground electrode these are the sensors which collect the signals arising from the muscle to the amplification system of the emg last slide coming to general principles of emg testing so uh, we learned what is emg we learned the definition we learned the history of emg we learned the motor unit we learned how it is going to supply to the larger bulk and smaller bulk we learned the platter taking an example of platysma and gastronomias we learned the magnitude of contraction of the muscle depends on two factor we also learned uh, size principle of motor unit recruitment on initial and uh, forced increase in force increase stage we also learned what is muap we learned how it is recorded we also learned recording phases in uh, three phases that is input processor and output phase uh, we also learned the instrumentation now coming to the general principles of emg testing when we talk about any any electrotherapy let it be a ultrasound or ift or tens there is some principles of how to use them so has the emg itself first one examination of number of muscles that is we if we are examining only biceps brachii if we have to take only biceps brachii emg we have to examine even brachioradialis which is below it we have to examine also the scapular muscles which are locating above it for example your deltoid or your trapezius which has which are above it to suspect any pathology occurred in the muscle if we know that if a person if a therapist understands that the pathology of the biceps brachii the root cause is not present in the biceps brachii it is in fact present in the trapezius upper trapezius so there is no use of assessing emg testing for biceps brachii he has to assess it for the upper trapezius so we need to assess both that is your uh, both above and below muscles of the suspected pathology exam second point examination of muscles innervated by the other nerves in the same limb for example we know that musculocutaneous nerve supplies biceps brachii so we have to also assess the same uh, muscles supplied by the same nerve for example we have to also assess coracobrachialis we should not leave it alive coming to third point sampling emg activity of full cross section of the muscle is tested we need to do full cross section of muscle we cannot just take one fiber and we assess it we have to do full cross section of the muscle is tested fourth point examination of muscle in contralateral limbs or both upper and lower limbs may be appropriate this is appropriate this point is appropriate when you are assessing a neurological patient for example in stroke we know that if in hemiplegia we know that entire half side of the body is affected so there is no use of assessing only upper limb and then telling that the muscle pathology is only present in upper limb we know that brain has affected entire half side of the body in hemiplegia we have already read it in read it in stroke so we have to assess ideally the lower, uh, lower extremity as well coming to the fifth point examination should be performed at appropriate time in the context of the suspected disorder or else you might not get the muscle un motor unit action potential so the time appropriate time is very important so this was the first part in the emg let's meet you all in the next video